A warm welcome to the show Energy and You, the weekly program that showcases the activities of the Nigerian National Petroleum Company, NNPC Limited. We also update you with other developments within the energy sector. I'm Erusa Igumbo. In this week's edition, NNPC Limited signs United Nations Global Compact, making it the first state-owned oil company to join the global initiative. Plus, House of Representatives lords NNPC Limited's acquisition of OVH energy assets as transparent and growth-oriented. Details of these and more shortly. Stay with us. First, let's take you through the latest stories trending on the global energy space this week. Oil prices went up at the start of the week as tight supply is back in focus. Investors focus on a tighter supply outlook after Moscow issued a temporary ban on fuel exports while remaining wary of further rate hikes that could dampen demand. Brent crude futures climbed 69 cents to $93.96 a barrel after settling 3 cents lower last Friday. U.S. West Texas Intermediate Crude Futures extended gains for a second session, trading at $90.57 a barrel, up 54 cents. Russia dodged the G7 price cap sanctions on most of its oil exports, where crude oil supplies increased 50% this spring, despite the G7 countries imposing sanctions due to war in Ukraine. The European Union G7 countries and Australia introduced a price cap of $60 a barrel on Russian oil last December, aiming to curb Russia's ability to finance the conflict in Ukraine. Now from New York in the United States of America, the call for a just energy transition for Africa continues to reverberate. This comes as NNPC Limited signed up to the UN Global Compact on the sidelines of the United Nations General Assembly meetings. The UN Global Compact is an initiative designed to encourage companies around the world to develop, implement and disclose responsible and sustainable corporate policies and practices. In this clip, we bring you moments of the signing ceremony and an interview by a team from the UN Global Compact on the feed recorded by NNPC Limited. Thank you so much for joining us. So you have literally just a second signed an agreement as a representative of the Nigerian oil state, state oil company with the UN Global Compact. Mm -hmm. Tell me more about this agreement and what led to it. What this means is that NMPC being the largest uh, oil company in Africa uh, with footprints across the globe uh, is uh, aligned with the sustainable go development goals of the United Nations focus on creating clean energy uh, of course, also a just transition of energy mm -hmm. sources and, of course, building more and more resources such that our impact of our business on the climate is uh, minimized while we continue to provide energy for today and for tomorrow for the whole of the world and particularly for our, for our country. What this means, NMPC is committed to moving towards much, much cleaner energy, uh, meeting all the requirements of the Global Compact, which includes, you know, governance uh, certainty, uh, governance uh, transparency, including fight against corruption across all of the value chain, and of course, ultimately, to serve the Nigerian people by providing them energy, which is what they require. Now, this is fantastic, you know, in terms of the promise of providing energy to the people, mm -hmm. but also the sustainable energy, the clean energy. Mm -hmm. And uh, tell me a little bit more about how exactly you're going to do this in terms of the sustainable part, which is obviously one of the, yeah. the big things that's mm -hmm. being discussed here at the UN General Assembly is this it? year. Clearly, the, the sustainable part is to see how, when can we get to net zero. Net zero, our country is committed to net zero by 2060. That means you must take certain practical steps, mm -hmm. including using transition fuel. In our country, it's a, it's a major gas country. So we use gas as a transition fuel going forward so that we reduce our footprints. And of course, more importantly, today, the majority of people don't have access to clean energy, for even for cooking. Therefore, you have to do that so careful substitution with gas 
as a source of energy as you progress, and then you find alternative and much cleaner use of the liquids that we produce in our country. So it's very practical. Mm -hmm. Of course, today in our country now there's zero flare. You can't start any project with a flare, and that means you know, the first step of emission has been taken. And, and you can't do this except you're organized, you have a sustainable plan, you have a way of doing things, you have access to financing, more importantly, mm -hmm. but more than anything, you must have a just process that leads to which is our country is committed to. Now, one of the themes of this Gabi conference here, the Global Africa Business Initiative, is energy. Tell people about the opportunity of energy, you know, that Africa really offers to the rest of the world. I think you can't have prosperity anywhere without energy, and, and that's very, very clear. Uh, today, uh, the whole of the sub-Saharan African uh, countries are actually having less than 50% of energy sufficiency mm -hmm. for energy availability. Uh, cheap energy availability. And of course, you have to address that before you re really talk about uh, prosperity. And therefore, there's a clear linkage between poverty, energy availability, and also peace. And we're trying to see how our business can close that gap by providing the energy so that prosperity can be created. And then, of course, development will now be sustainable in the, in the long term or even in the short term. And that way, you can see the connection between the fossil fuel industry and the future. And of course, its impact on climate is not disputable, but it's something that you have to move in a very just and transparent manner. And what about making it affordable to the people? Affordable means uh, you have to increase quantity, and you know, there's a clear linkage between demand and supply. Uh, because people can access it. You don't want to do subsidy, yes, that's clear. But you have to make it abundant so that people can have access to it. And once abundance comes, uh, volume increases, uh, quantities are more. Of course, you know, naturally, you can see lower prices. Well, this is fantastic. This is really like a groundbreaking uh, uh, agreement that you've just signed. So we wish you all the success with that. But I want to ask you, so this conference, you know, the, the first of its kind, the first Gabby conference was held last year. Have you seen uh, things change in the year until now in terms of Africa on a global stage, business opportunities, the world's interest in Africa? Absolutely. There are new awareness that people must take very practical and swift steps towards getting uh, taking decisions that will help you know reduce carbon footprints, uh, ultimately reducing the impact on climate. You know that's very clear. Every company is talking about this. Companies are taking practical steps to do this, and and of course uh, it takes a while to to build this. Uh, but some companies have more capacity than the other. We do. We do have we have huge capacity. We have taken certain practical steps to see how we can progress our gas projects so that they can quickly substitute biomass as source of energy. And I think every company is doing that. But we, I know that in sub-Saharan Africa, this is very, very clear. Conversations around on the table on, on, on national oil companies across Africa have indicated very clearly that everyone is taking certain practical steps. But the clarity also is that uh, you can't do this when people are short of energy. Mm -hmm. And that means that's the first gap we're trying to fill. And then, yeah. then going forward, we can now make it much more cleaner. So what do you want to see from the next Gabi conference this time next year? I think the world get creating a segregated platform for addressing uh, challenges of energy supply in sub-Saharan Africa by creating windows for financing for African countries. I would like to see this in the next conference to say, we're helping you, don't stop. It can be sustainable, but we'll support you and we'll help you. No, we're not asking for pity. My president has said, no, not absolutely not. Uh, create the businesses, create the finances that can close that gap. Wonderful. Thank you very much. I look forward to speaking to you next year. Thank you. In the last episode of Energy and You, we featured the meeting of the House of Representatives Other Committee investigating the acquisition of OVH energy assets by NNPC Limited. As part of that investigation process, the committee conducted an on the spot assessment of the acquired assets and facilities across the value chain. The tour, which included visits to the aviation terminal and Jetsy, among others, gave the lawmakers the opportunity to address all concerns raised on the business ethics of the acquisition. Take a look. We have about seven points to get out of. The House of Representatives Ad Hoc Committee on OVH Assets Acquisition there, inspecting key facilities of NNPC Limited acquired from OVH Energy. The committee's chairman, Honorable Abubakar Nelaraba, led the members on the oversight visit in the company of NNPC Limited's executive vice president downstream, Mr. Adida Poshegun, and other management staff. Facilities assessed include the aviation terminal in Ikeja, Terminal 1 in Apapa, 
Lube's plant in Apapa and the Apapa Single Point Mooring Jetty, all located in Lagos State. After the fiscal verification of the assets, the committee members unanimously attested that all the facilities indeed exist and that none of them were on lease as previously claimed in the public domain. From our record, we inspected and we found out that there is no jetty that was leased or there is no tank that was leased to any other company. It all belongs to the NNPC Limited. About um, the profit made in the first quarter of the NPC rate about 18.4 billion. We saw the process where those profit comes from. And it's a good one for Nigeria and, and, and I think it's going to add more value and more revenue to, to the Nigerian and then the downstream sector. So far, with what we've seen, there's hope for Nigeria and the activities we've recorded is quite impressive. It could only get better. The executive vice president downstream of NNPC Limited, Mr. Adidako Shegun, further re-echoed the company's assurances to stakeholders that the value addition of the acquisition of OVH assets has made a positive impact on its business operations. We have seen synergy benefits. Um, the uh, branding, the NNPC brand with uh, some of those uh, special OVH assets, like I said, uh, the aviation business has I mean, resulted in uh, so much um, uh, uh, revenue for us as an NPC, so it's really good. And um, what I want to say to Nigerians is that um, these downstream assets, we promise to sweat them, uh, work them efficiently, uh, so that the dividends uh, of an NPC becoming a limited liability company um, is realized uh, for our team in uh, population. At the end of the assessment, the Honorable Nella Arba led at her committee expressed satisfaction with the process of acquisition of OVH energy assets by NNPC Limited. The outcome of the lawmakers' assessment of the entire acquisition process of OVH energy assets by NNPC Limited is expected to put to rest any doubts and controversies surrounding the business. The exercise also underscores the importance of rigorous scrutiny and verification in addressing concerns raised by stakeholders in major business transactions of NNPC Limited. This will further solidify NNPC Limited's position as a leader in the energy sector. Time now to update you with some of the successes recorded in the war on crude oil theft and pipeline vandalism by NNPC Limited. Across the Niger Delta, the war on crude oil theft is on and the industry-wide security collaboration continues to record remarkable progress. Between the 16th and 22nd of September 2023, a total of 195 incidents were recorded in several oil-producing states in the Niger Delta. On the 21st of September 2023, Tantita Security Services, in collaboration with the Nigerian Army, the Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps, carried out surveillance patrol following an intel on the activities of vandals in Amwekme, Escravos Pipeline in Mereje, Delta State, and discovered a 4-inch illegal connection implanted on a 32-inch Amwekme, Escravos active pipeline running across a body of water to an illegal refinery. Just a few days ago, they came up with the intel that they've discovered the place, so we are here to dig it out and what we discovered here is amazing. You can see the illegal connection, the IC. This one is running through all the way down to their eye arrows. So we are flagging this up properly for the relevant authorities to come and uh, act immediately and remove this uh, illegal connection. The Nigerian military is also here with us, as well as the the Nigerian Civil Defense Corps, we are working together on this uh, operation. Uh, Preparations for its removal and remediation of the point is underway. In Beni Krukru, Ndokwa and Mereje, also in Delta State, various illegal connections were uncovered. At this spot, in River State, we get a clearer picture of how the thieves attach their pipes to major active lines. In River State, a number of illegal connections were also reported. On this line, 
A valve has been connected by the thieves to give them better control. These illegal connections are being removed and repairs are ongoing. In the past week, 40 illegal connections to major pipelines were uncovered in various locations in Delta and River State. 20 cases of pipeline vandalism were also recorded in the past week in Obudu Omadino in Delta and River State. These marks are evident of the attempts made by oil thieves to break the pipe open. Between the 16th and 22nd of September 2023, 78 illegal refining businesses were destroyed. From Rivers to Delta and Bielsa State, several illegal businesses were brought to a halt. In this location in Onoro, several illegal refineries dot the area. Over eight can be spotted here. From the refinery, pipes are connected to drums which collect the illegally refined product. That was before the demolition of all ovens and contraptions used in refining stolen crude occurred. In Degema, drums containing crude oil were discovered alongside oil pits. In Obodo Omadino in Delta State, Ekakwamire and Sapele, several illegal businesses were also uncovered and destroyed. In River State, the story is the same. Sacks of stolen crude were also recovered. In the past week, storage sites used for housing stolen crude oil and illegally refined products were discovered in Ndopa West and Kwale in Delta State and also in Imo State. One case of oil spill was recorded in Ebocha River State, while five cases of vessel AIS infractions were flagged and escalated to the Navy. Nine vehicles conveying stolen crude were arrested in Ohaji Egbema in Imo State, Umu Sadege, Ndokwa West and Wari in Delta State. A vehicle carrying stolen crude was also arrested in Ogbia in Bielsa State. Five of these incidents took place in the Deep Blue Sea, 40 in the western part of the Niger Delta, 83 in the central region and 67 in Nigeria's Niger Delta region. You are still watching Energy and You. The 2023 International Conference of the Association of Professional Women Engineers in Nigeria, APWEN, took place recently in Abuja. The event demonstrated a commitment to promote gender equality in engineering and to ensure a brighter future for women engineers in Nigeria and beyond. This year's conference also marked the association's 40th anniversary. APWEN is focused on empowering women engineers and promoting women inclusion in the workplace and in decision-making processes. The three-day event attracted engineering professionals and stakeholders from Nigeria and around the world. From technical sessions, workshops, and panel discussions, experts from various engineering disciplines and diverse fields shared their knowledge and experiences to promote and foster innovation through sustainable engineering practices, emerging technologies, diversity and inclusion in science, technology, engineering and mathematics, STEM, and leadership development. Speaking at a panel session tagged, Diversity, Equity and Inclusion in Engineering, Embracing Vision, 
amplifying voices and shaping the future. The managing director of NMPC Energy Services Limited, Mrs. Sofia Mbakwe, who was represented by Mrs. Martina Atucci, revealed that NMPC Limited is committed to gender inclusion in the company's operations and businesses. Yes, I've been in the engineering field uh, for the last uh, 30 years and I'm among the um, fortunate Nigerians to work in a very uh, good and big organization like NMPC because it's a place you're given opportunity to you know, showcase yourself, what you're made of. Various panelists shared their experiences, successes and impacts as women professionals in various male-dominated fields. You know, for a long time in the faculty, I was the only female for maybe about uh, eight years or so. I was the only female lecturer. So when it comes, all these things like secretary, welfare, all this one, they push it to me. But at the point, I said, no, I can do any other thing. Somebody can be a secretary. A male can be a secretary in the department. It shouldn't be only me. I think that's a major uh, challenge I can say I face in the workplace. I'm the dean of the faculty now. As a female engineering consulting firm in Botswana and the only one that was established by a female engineer, I had to ensure that um, I come up with initiatives to ensure that uh, our voices are heard. Some of the initiatives that I undertake within the company, within the workplace, which I'm also um, trying to roll out in our region, one is to ensure that uh, our upcoming engineers don't shy away from being uh, in the front. Speaking earlier at the event, the president of APWEN, engineer Dr. Elizabeth Eterigo, expressed profound gratitude to the NMPC Limited for its continuous sponsorship of some of the association's programs targeted at improving lives and promoting STEM for the girl child. The 2023 International Conference of the Association of Professional Women Engineers in Nigeria proved to be a resounding success with its thought-provoking sessions, influential speakers, and industry engagement. At NNPC, I stand as a testament to the transformative power of inclusion. I firmly believe that women's participation at the highest echelons of energy sector is not just a matter of gender equality. It is a matter of industrial strength and innovation. Research consistently shows that diverse teams, which include women in leadership, perform better, innovate more, and yield greater financial returns. It is not about men versus women. It is about leveraging the full spectrum of human potential to activate and drive our industries forward. The event also provided opportunities for networking, collaboration, and business exploration geared at empowering women engineers to bring about meaningful change. What do we do at NNPC? Since inception as the National Oil Company of Nigeria, our mandate has been to serve the nation and meeting the energy needs of over 200 million people. Over the years, we have invested in tomorrow's leaders and contributed to the development of communities across the nation. We have grown a network of over 500 service stations. We are the driving force behind the constantly growing Nigerian economy. With an efficient distribution network servicing all parts of the country, we ensure the highest quality standards in our crude refining processes. Nigeria boasts of immense oil and gas reserves which we explore in commercial quantities, providing endless opportunities for economic development. As we drilled for oil, we discovered vast amounts of gas, up to 200 trillion scop. By harnessing gas, we have reduced gas flaring and invested in liquefaction plants, shipping gas across the globe. Our energy footprint is remarkable. We supply gas to the domestic market for power generation, reaching all across Nigeria. Powering everything anywhere 
and everywhere. NNPC, energy for today, energy for tomorrow. NNPC Limited, through one of its subsidiaries, NNPC Foundation Limited, recently paid a familiarization visit to the Abuja Municipal Area Council head office. The purpose of the meeting was to discuss the progress and implementation of sustainable community development projects being executed by NNPC Limited in the Area Council. Giving an overview of the ongoing community development projects being executed by NMPC Limited in Amak and other parts of the country, the managing director of NMPC Foundation Limited, Mrs. Emanuela Arukwe, said that the various initiatives being undertaken by the company are all geared at improving the quality of lives and infrastructure in the communities. NMPC has been in the forefront of doing a lot of compensation responsibilities, especially in the areas of where we have our footprints, where we are operating. We have a lot of um, um, operations we do all over the whole nation. We have settled in on doing a, a medical outreach. We might have further engagement as to what we are really um, concretized it into being. Responding, the executive chairman of AMAC, Honorable Christopher Zaka Michaelangu, appreciated NMPC Limited for its commitment to community development while acknowledging the positive impacts of the various interventions in the communities. I am glad with your uh, objectives, as you have earlier pointed out, that uh, in part of your corporate responsibility, you think of education, health, and environment. It is nice, even the, 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 the ter territory himself, if you can go around, you just point out the key village. You don't need to be told if you go there yourself. We need we need assistance from all over to assist us to, to keep the city clean. The meeting between NMPC Foundation Limited and the Abuja Municipal Area Council demonstrates a shared commitment towards sustainable community development and a partnership geared towards socio-economic growth and sustainability. And that's where we draw the curtains on the program today. For more updates and other developments in Nigeria's energy sector, please join us again next week. But for now, you can catch up on all other episodes of the program by scanning the QR code on your screen. We implore you to visit us on all our social media handles and follow us for more updates on the activities of NNPC Limited. I'm Egusa Igumbo. Thank you for watching and bye for now.